Hello, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to another big episode of 4 Drive TV. We've got trips, motorsport, plenty of 4x4 news and excitement. Let's get stuck into it. Fred lightly. Keep it safe. Play hard. Good morning everybody, Alan Johnson here from Piranha and it is a wonderful sunny morning. In fact it probably looks like about two or three degrees out there and I can't see beyond the nose of the car. Now yesterday went very well, it was a pretty tough day, a lot of forward driving, a lot of winching, a lot of really hard stuff. We travelled about probably 500 metres from the pub to a trap called Brewery Track which takes us up a particularly interesting hill. Now this little hill I've done this many times in the past but this time it took us pretty much all day. There was winching, and then there was some more winching, and just for interest, there was more winching. Today's going to hopefully be a little bit less challenging and a bit more perhaps scenic. There's an old gold mine to look at, if we can still get to that. There's a track which goes from Knockwood right up across the top of the hill to Mount Terrible, which sounds very exciting. It isn't actually that exciting, but it's a lovely track. Hi, I'm Rodney from Wholesale Automatics. And I'm Stuart from Wholesale Automatics. Day two of our trip. We're just about to kick off and we'll be heading out today on another cold and very wintry and very white out sort of a day. It's a very thick fog. It's going to be an interesting day. We can't wait to get out there. The crew are all ready and raring to go. It's going to be an interesting trip. We're heading up through some of the old gold mines and that, a couple of which have now just recently reopened due to the value of gold, become a more viable thing. We'll be heading up to the couple of the mountain points. Alan knows this part of the world like the back of his hands, so it's going to be a great day. We can't wait to get out there and join him. Yeah, it was an interesting day yesterday. The Tritons had a good test. Spent a fair while setting them up and we wanted to know what they could do and they pretty much did what we thought they could do. They kept up with everything else in that sort of terrain. There was a lot of winching, a lot of mud, a lot of water and thankfully the water and rain we've had overnight has cleaned the cars off for us too so it should be a good day today. I was very impressed with the Tritons yesterday. Having two on the trip helped both of us understand the only difference between the two cars yesterday was basically just the two different driving styles. It was interesting to see who's worked and who didn't and they were actually very, very closely matched. As we went on through the day, we learnt much about how much more we could push them and quite amazed at exactly how far you actually could push these cars and they did a tremendous job. Yeah, it was very impressive the way the vehicles handled the terrain. Again, very surprised at what they can do, particularly under those sort of conditions. It's been great, the atmosphere's been fantastic, but we do have a second day to kick off and I can't wait to do it. From this wonderful tranquil place, it's back to the car and the maps and have a look around. We've only got a few hours left before we have to head out, but we have a gold mine that used to be accessible to have a poke into. We're going to go and check out where the moonlight spur is on the bottom of Knockwood up to Mount Terrible. And we're going to have a bit of a poke around and enjoy some more of this wonderful scenery, guys. So come along for the ride and let's check it out. Hi, I'm Tony from Donaldson Filters. When you're looking at quality air filters, there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind. Firstly, and simply, just the amount of media. You can easily tell which filter has the more media by looking at how many pleats there are and how close they are together. The other thing is this little flat section along there. Now that's called pleat lock. What that does is actually evenly space the pleats in the media to get a nice even contaminant loading across the media and make your air filter last a lot longer. Another thing to look for is just simply the construction of the air filter. Quality air filters have heavy duty inner and outer metal liners whereas some of the other competitor brands don't necessarily have these.
today. It's been quite gentle conditions. We've just decided to take some back tracks behind Woods Point. I wouldn't say challenging, but quite a nice change from yesterday, which was extreme and technical four-wheel driving. A little bit of low range stuff as we come down the hill just to keep things safe. There's been a lot of water around, so just to make sure that we don't slip and we stay under control. The conditions have been very overcast, there's been a lot of mist and fog around, so not great views, but it's just been beautiful to drive through the Victorian forest. Left this morning at about nine o'clock through very, very thick, heavy fog. A lot easier than yesterday, but still not exactly plain sailing. Very, very twisty, some up and down bit, going through some slippery bits and pieces. Very comfortable track, very enjoyable. Have had a great day. We've come down through some of the best tracks around the area, certainly. Went up the Morning Star track, come across a lot of old gold mines, which are just basically big holes in the ground, pretty much seem bottomless. You could hear something hits the bottom, but it took a long time to get there. One of the most picturesque things about the place is the change in the scenery. Pretty eerie sort of feeling when you're going through those areas, but at the same time spectacular. Very relaxing, a nice morning of touring, which is a bit of a contrast to what we did yesterday, which was pretty much hard work. But today's been nice and relaxing so far, and really looking forward to the rest of the afternoon. This area was responsible for 60% of Victoria's total gold output for roughly 20 years, so a lot of gold taken out of these hills. Some of the tailings and the old abandoned mines that we looked at on the way through, really quite remarkable pieces of construction. It's a long way down there, it's a big effort in those days, I'm certain. We're halfway through our second day of touring. We've just come back through Woods Point onto a new track. We've done a few river crossings, they've been quite good. Not very deep, but very exciting nonetheless. We've come up through some of the tracks and of course we've come across the mine and we've still got another half a day of tracks to go. And from here we'll be turning around and we're heading off to Moonlight Spur and Mount Terrible to end the day. This is Alan Johnson here on Johnson Hill Track, reporting on Gold Fever in the Woods Point area. We've rediscovered an old shaft that goes right back into the mountain, we believe about a hundred and something metres. There are people who have found specks of gold, now that's quite remarkable. This is an old closed down gold mine shaft and this is a real piece of adventure finding this. So guys, come out and enjoy, have a look at the country, it's wonderful. Please note, this is extremely important, we do not recommend or endorse in any way the climbing into of holes in the ground that are probably over a hundred years old. You really shouldn't be in there. Hi, I'm Chris Weston, off-road racer and owner of Off-Road Rush. I've raced all around Australia on different terrain and I wouldn't trust anything but my Mickey Thompson tyres. That's why I also choose Mickey Thompsons for my four-wheel drive. They perform equally well on and off-road. And they have a full range of tyres that handle all conditions and have more grip. Mickey Thompsons, they're legendary off-road tyres. Call 1300 Mickey for your nearest dealer. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three-year, 60,000 kilometre warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport. Built in Australia for Australian conditions. Finally, the driving light you've always wanted is here, boasting a class-leading free-form reflector and a super-tough polycarbonate lens and ABS housing. The all-new Nava Ultimate 225 is a revolutionary driving light, available in halogen, halogen blue and HID, in both spread and pencil beams, and supplied complete with a plug-and-play wiring harness and polycarbonate lens protectors. These Aussie Outback Tough Lights outshine the competition. Visit nava.com.au for more information and make the switch to the brightest lights in town. Certainly the tracks that we run on today couldn't be done with a two-wheel drive. Got to have a four-wheel drive. 
and we were even in low range and that and we did slide down a couple of the tracks just a little bit. A lot of the corners are quite twisty and quite turning and some of them clay based with rock underneath it so it does make it a very very treacherous sort of corners. A lot of switchbacks, very very sharp so low range, four wheel drive, all locked in, keep it safe, make sure you leave enough room between the car in front just in case you do get the runaway a little bit and travel in a group just in case you come unstuck on a corner and need to be just pulled out a little bit so you can keep going. It's been a quite a pleasant short drive. Now the track we've taken takes us past a hell of a lot of old gold mines which are surprisingly still open and you can actually see down them. It's quite interesting to think a little bit about the history of this place. This is a report on the Woods Point area. By the mid-1860s, about 50 large mines were in full swing and hundreds of smaller claims were producing gold and the town's population had increased to over 2,000 people. Woods Point actually had three suburbs, Richmond, Piccadilly and Ghoulies Creek, with about, believe this or not, 30 hotels. They must have been a thirsty lot. Perkins Brewery, a courthouse, obviously, a police station, a hospital for the sick buggers, several doctors, a chemist, six banks, and that gives you an indication as to how much gold was found in the area, a post office, a telegraph, business office, stores, livery stables, churches, dancing saloons, a newspaper, a mountaineer soap factory, ginger beer, a cordial factory, abattoir slaughterhouse, a town band, and a town crier to walk around and tell people what was going on. And that was all in the 1860s. Here, now there's about 30 people in the whole area. It's absolutely empty. But I'll tell you what, it is a wonderful place to visit. It's got such an incredibly rich history. It's wonderful country. Come and see it for yourself. In between episodes of your favourite TV show, visit fourwheeldrivetv.com.au for the latest in 4x4 news, links, prizes and videos. Stay in touch with myself and Danny and receive regular updates, promos and photos via our Facebook page. And visit youtube.com forward slash fourwheeldrivetvtube for our latest 4x4 videos. There's three great ways to stay up to date and in touch with our growing four-wheel drive community in between episodes. This week we take a close look at highlights from the final day of David Metcalfe's Exidy 8 day rainforest challenge held in South East Queensland. David Metcalf has been setting stages and running events for almost 15 years and as a regular official at the Malaysian Rainforest Challenge, an Australian link to this world-class extreme 4x4 challenge was inevitable. As such, the last week of September realised the continuance of David Metcalf's eight days of off-road magic with his own Rainforest Challenge sanctioned eight day event. Forty-three stages covering GPS, speed and winch challenges, 
filled out the eight day competition with a combination of day and night events. A selection of Australia's top winch challenge teams took to the hills above Kilcoy to first brave two days of the final round of the ARB Extreme Winch Challenge before enduring a further six days of madness and mayhem, hence making up the eight day Extreme International. Over the eight days, stage placings and points were calculated and by the final day, the three top teams were clearly apparent. With 3,629 points, Aaron Ward and Linda O'Reilly took third place in Barbie. On 3,786 points, Colin Warnikin and Cam Gale held second place, and topping out with 3,938 points, the Four Drive TV sponsored team of Christian Trues and Terry Kane deservedly took first place overall. Congratulations to all competitors and marshals, and thanks to Shane Gerrish for the footage. If you drive a four-wheel drive with or without a dual battery kit, then it's time to upgrade. Modern vehicles and modern battery technologies require smart electronics, and the Piranha Off-Road Products DBE140 Dual Battery Controller has all the smart grunt you will need packed into an affordable and tiny package. Priced at just $170, the Piranha DBE140 is the smart choice in dual battery management. For more information on how you can stay charged, visit piranhaoffroad.com.au. Viewers, the wait is over. Shop online at the 4 Drive TV store for personalised merchandise, 4 Drive TV clothing, 4 Drive products and even DVD subscriptions. That's right, two episodes of 4 Drive TV posted out to you every fortnight for the whole series and all for just $50. Support your favourite program, wear the brand you love and never miss another episode with our collector's DVD subscriptions. Get shopping at 4DriveTV.com.au with the 4 Drive TV online store. G'day, my name's Jake and this is my 2006 Hilux. Got a steel bull bar, ARB rear bar, side steps, lights. Got a winch running a two inch foam cell suspension lift. And I've got an ARB draw system in the back. So I've got the side and rear ARB fold out awnings running UHF and got a roof rack. I want to convert the lights to HIDs and put a 3 inch exhaust. Also got ARB front and rear diff locks. Love going up to Otways and also the high country. Heading up to the high country within the next month or two and then wouldn't mind going to Fraser Island. If you'd like to be the weekly Your Rig right here on 4 Drive TV, then send an email to myself with Your Rig in the subject line. Each weekly winner takes home an electric blue span set snatch strap, a complete U-Fix-It windscreen repair kit, a DP chip stubby holder, pen and Berrima diesel cap, an ARB cap, a packet of up and go courtesy of Sanitarium, ARB Penrith stubby holder, an emergency can of ARB Outback Survival Socks, an RFI stubby holder and an RFI cap, a HEMA Great Desert Tracks Atlas and Guide, an X17 Fiskars Synthetic Axe, a 911 Memorial Cap courtesy of 511 Tactical, an ARB Rechargeable LED Adventure Light, ARB's latest new product, Forby the Soft Toy, an off-road ready Travelmate tyre pressure gauge, a set of smart scissors from our good friends at Keesler Knives. A Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit. A Nava hand size palm LED light. Two revolutionary expander tent pegs. A magazine from Bowhunter 
wild deer and hunting adventures and dirt comp. And it's all neatly packed up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. Just like to thank Simon and Miranda for inviting me along this weekend. It's been great and thank you to the sponsors for the prize back. A particular filter is another exhaust scrubber, you could call it. There is a catalytic converter after the exhaust, and then there is a particulate filter. Particularly is to get the soot out of the exhaust, and it should be really quite clean. A simple way to check it, if you've got one, you'll run your finger on the exhaust pipe, it should be clean in there. If it is black, well, it usually has not got a particulate filter. They are very susceptible to problems, mainly out here because people who drive them in the city drive short distance, stop starting, don't run it hot and that filter blocks up and it can eventually melt down and it is a very expensive item to replace. On some vehicles you can remove it, we shouldn't, I mean it's part of the EPA. In general it is not a bad thing to have for the environment by itself. It runs a clean exhaust at the back which we do want. If you have got one once a week or once every two weeks you should give it a good sharp run somewhere to get the exhaust temperature up. Because in general people just aim along the city and whatever and that particular filter doesn't get hot. They get up to a thousand degrees when they're really hot and burn out. And it's done through the injection system. They either inject fuel straight into the exhaust system or they change the timing or put the fuel up in other directions to increase the exhaust temperature. That's why vehicles with particulate filters often have the complaint that they have higher fuel consumption because it's when it regenerates they have to get fuel into it and of course that creates heat and it should clean it out. So it's an important thing that every so often you give this vehicle a good nice run, ideally with a bit of load, not speeding of course, and to get some heat into it, to burn it out, to clean the rubbish out virtually, that's what it is. The last couple of tracks coming out from Moonlight actually split off and sort of snaked across each other. There were some easier tracks and some ones that required a diff locks and things like that to get us to the end result, been up onto Mount Terrible, provided an interesting amount of challenges to cater for all levels of full driving and made a really good trip. This morning we did the Morning Star Mine Track. The track was very, very pretty with beautiful scenery from the trees, the tree ferns, the greenery, the whole lushness. In fact, the whole Victorian high country is just spectacular, it really is. We travelled them then out to Scott's Reserve at the bottom where we did a little creek crossing then headed down back in towards a place called Comet Flat. Comet Flat's just out of Woods Point and that's a great area for camping. From there we went up around the back into uh, Johnson Hill and a heap of other tracks around the back to look around and see what we could see. Came back down again on the main road, back down towards Knockwood, then from Knockwood up the famous Moonlight Spur which we talked about earlier. From Moonlight Spur right up here to Mount Terrible via Ryan Spur, so it's been a terrific day. Okay, well we spent the afternoon doing a bit more challenging forward driving than we did this morning. This morning was a nice leisurely cruise and this afternoon we've headed up to Mount Terrible which was about an hour's drive over some pretty challenging four-wheel drive terrain. Parts of it were pretty easy but we got to use the lockers a couple of times and we definitely needed them, especially the last bit getting up the top of the hill here. We made it to our final destination, Mount Terrible, just what Alan planned. Been a really enjoyable couple of days. The group of people that we've been with are a lot more experienced in these conditions to myself so I've been sort of dragged along a little bit by the skull sometimes but really enjoying it. I hope I get another invitation again and I'll be the one with my hand up ready to go on the next trip, that's for sure. Once again, the Woods Point Jemison area has produced a spectacular tracks and scenery. If you haven't been out here, please make the time, grab the family, some friends and come up here and enjoy. It's a spectacular part of Australia. The high country, particularly the Wood Point track, no matter which way you look in Woods Point, there's tracks leading everywhere. Some of them easy, some of them hard, but they're certainly worth an effort and hope to see you up here at some time. Left this morning and we headed out via a few tracks back into Woods Point, looked at a few gold mines and went up through Woods Point up another track that we found and headed up Moonlight Spur and up here onto Mount Terrible where you see fairly misty and not much of a view. Quite chilly as we're sitting on top of the mountain but as you can probably see in the background there's the fire tower and all the telecommunications for all the area. But yeah, overall it's been a really, really good trip so nothing too difficult today that's good but being nice and leisurely and a little bit more relaxing so overall been a really good trip.
I wanted to thank everyone that was involved in putting this together and yeah, look forward to the next one. It's the end of the day now, it's about 4.30, the scouting get very, very cold, you can feel the mist rolling in, and we start heading for home from here. So guys, it's been a great one, thanks for coming along on the trip and enjoying it. We've had a ball, hope you have too. My name's Marshall Bell. It's an 89 GQ Patrol. It was a wagon, it was stock standard when I bought it. Chopped it into an extra cab. Done a few custom things like the steering setups, all my own custom design high steer because you can't buy it for patrols. 4.2 diesel, turbo intercooled with a Skyline turbo, get the boost right down low. It's normally do Willow Glen, Tapiri. Thinking about doing tough trucks soon. Last year's Tapiri, me and Steve, we got a first place there, so hopefully go back out there and see how we go this year. Put a sway bow in the rear to keep it a bit more stable, which has been good all weekend, but yeah, not quite good enough. <laughs> Might have a couple of repairs to do, I'm not sure. I haven't even had a look at the side of the vehicle yet. Pretty good weekend here, just driving around the show, showing everyone what four drives are built for and sort of why we jack them up this high and put this bigger tyres on. Basically built this up at All Bart Up, that's my workshop. It's been a lot of fun, so come down next year for the show. It's really good. Viewers, thank you for tuning in once again. I'm Simon Christie. You've been watching 4 Drive TV, and if you need any further information, please visit 4 tv.com.au. I look forward to seeing you next week. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard.